my most recent research was on um, an ultrasound survey. The title of this publication of the research results is a survey of ultrasound guided peripheral intravenous practices, a report of supply usage and variability between clinical roles and departments. The publication came out in the Journal of the Association for Vascular Access and it's open access. Ultrasound is being used by physicians, by nurses, by techs, we had approximately 1,475 respondents who completed the survey. Vascular access specialists, emergency departments, intensive care, rapid response teams, radiology, and home care. We're finding that the number of difficult to access patients is increasing. In some cases, it's more than 50% of the patients who have chronic diseases, have many comorbidities, um, are obese, or have other challenges like renal failure. These patients have had many different types of IVs and their veins have been depleted, or they were just hard to find anyway. With the advent of ultrasound, we're able to find those veins and to place a line with one attempt. We have three basic areas of concern with ultrasound guided PIV insertions, basic aseptic technique and how it's followed, protection of the transducer or probe and gel. Our goal with this research was to really look at uh, the supply usage practices for anyone, any clinician who was performing ultrasound guided insertions. And what we found was a lot of variability between the types of supplies used from department to department. Gel helps us provide a way to transmit the sound waves through the skin and be able to see the veins and then guide the needle into the vein. Unfortunately, the gel gets spread all around on the skin and can become a source of contamination, even causing securement and dressing failure if the gel is left on the skin. The clinicians reporting in the survey found that they often had difficulty removing all of the gel from the skin. In my practice, I prefer separating the gel from the insertion site. It's cleaner, it's neater. I also don't have to worry about the cleanup after the successful insertion. My dressing sticks better. Everything just works more efficiently when I don't have gel on the skin. Basically across the board, sterile, probe covers or probe separation is, um, is part of the recommendations. In uh, the American College of Emergency Physicians, in the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine, in the Infusion Nurses Society Standards of Practice, in the Association for Vascular Access uh, Transducer Guidance, all of those include issues with probe covers or probe separation, making sure that a transducer or probe does not transmit any bacteria to the patient. Our study found that clinicians are not always using sterile probe covers for ultrasound guided PIV insertions, which makes us have a concern over contamination and patient safety. If you choose to use a sterile cover and gel on the patient's skin, sterile gel is strongly recommended. I think the survey is really just a wake up call for all of us to say, okay, we know we're using this procedure all of the time. Lots of different clinicians are using it and lots of different departments. We should all be doing it the same way and we're not. So the survey has simply given us information to show where our gaps are and where performance improvement can help us to provide better standardization with this ultrasound guided peripheral IV insertion technique.